Well, hi, everybody. Good evening here. Good afternoon out west. We're going to get to all those other stories shortly. But first up, if you build it, will they come? When it comes to electric cars, the distinct answer is maybe. A new poll may explain why EV sales seem like they're beginning to stall a bit. A survey by the AP and University of Chicago shows that only 19% of Americans are very or extremely likely to have their next car be all electric. Another 20% said somewhat likely, which, if you wanted to find the sully side up on this, it is way higher than current sales rates. It's about 40%, right? But flip it over. That survey also says about half of those surveyed said they are not likely to buy an electric car. And then a few people said, I don't want to buy a car ever again. It's odd. The biggest reason people said no to EVs is simple. It's the cost. EVs can cost way more than other cars. In some cases, 10 to 20,000 more for the electric version of the same model. An example, the gas-powered Ford F-150 Lariat version of that truck starts at about $57,000, according to their website. The electric version of the Lariat starts at $75,000. Even a tax credit, if you get one, and gas savings over, what, five or ten years? Unlikely to make up that gap. And customers, all of you, you're smart enough to know it. That new University of Chicago poll should be a wake-up call to policymakers who are trying to use laws and rules to drive consumers to something they may not want or may not be able to afford. How many people are buying $80,000 pickup trucks? especially when it's those who can least afford it who might end up paying the most because perhaps they live the furthest out. But D.C. and some states are ignoring this and going 100 miles per hour pretty much in one direction. And tomorrow, the EPA expected to announce unprecedented pollution limits on cars. At least 54% of new vehicles sold in America would basically need to be electric or maybe hybrid by 2030. That is only seven years from now, about six or five model years that are being engineered right now. Is this the right way to go? We want clean air, but at what cost? For reactions, bring in New York City Comptroller Brad Lander. He oversees $240 billion in pension fund assets. He's announced the plans to reach a net zero emissions investment portfolio by 2040. We're also joined by Strive Asset Management co-founder and Republican presidential candidate Vivek Ramaswamy, who has been called the godfather of anti-ESG. Thank you both for joining us. Brad, I'm going to begin with you, and welcome to Last Call, by the way. It's good to have you on the program. I think these are goals, clean air, no pollution. I don't care what your political party is. Those seem pretty good to me. But are we worried that all these policies are moving so fast they're just going to crush lower-income people? So the New York City pension funds, which represent the retirement security of teachers and cops and firefighters, 750,000 of them, we're big investors in Ford and General Motors. And so we're really concerned about helping make sure they make the transition to a low emissions fleet. Some of that will be selling more and increasingly affordable EVs. Some of that will be managing emissions on the gas powered cars that they continue to sell. What? But Brad, that's what if this doesn't what if this whole thing doesn't work what if consumers decide they don't want electric cars the survey said maybe half do half don't a lot of people who said they might maybe will change their mind when they do it are you worried about your investments in ford and gm going down that's why we cnbc are doing the story we're not picking on electric cars but if they lose tens of billions of dollars that's bad for you Well, for a while, you know, they've set a goal of 2035 to make the conversion to electric vehicles. Um, And so we'll see that play out over the next uh, dozen years in the in that remaining period of time. They've got work to do to remove reduce emissions on their gas powered cars as well. I am confident that it is both necessary and profitable for them to take the necessary steps in this direction, that they'll keep returning a good return to the investment funds like us who are lucky to be invested in them at the same time that they drive toward net zero. Because if we don't, we will all pay dramatically higher costs as a result of not getting emissions under control. Well, I get, well that's the variable, Vivek, I think that we, people say, but I just don't know. Maybe it is true, maybe it's not down the road. Time ultimately will tell. I guess why we're doing the story on CNBC is that for me, it's sort of, I'm worried about the stocks, I'm worried about the investors in these companies, I'm worried about hundreds of billions of taxpayer dollars that are moving really quickly in one direction 
And it doesn't look like the public is fully there yet or, or will ever but, be. You know, let me well, just tell you who I'm, I'm worried, worried about. Vivek, Vivek worried first, and Brad, I'd like to hear your response. Hmm. Thank you. I'm frankly worried about the pension fund plan participants in Brad's and New York City's pension funds, because you know what? Fossil fuel companies dramatically outperformed the S&P by over 80 percent last year. They outperformed the very ESG funds that divested from fossil fuel companies by nearly 100 percent. And yet these ESG plans, including with with respect to Brad, the one released by New York City, calls for divesting from exactly the sectors that even just over the last 12 months have dramatically outperformed. And I think that if you want to go to the public as voters and say as citizens, do you want to make the sacrifices needed to fight, let's just say, what I think is the current premise of climate change, then that's up to the voters to decide. But it is not the proper role of any pension fund manager or anybody overseeing pension funds to use the citizens' capital to advance that agenda through the back door. But why not, Vivek? Because money money talks and and bull excrement walks. I mean, if you want to make change, you've got to have the money behind you. I think you could agree to that. Absolutely. But I think that you should use your own money. But the problem is you right now have political actors in blue state pension funds that are using OPM, other people's money, to advance agendas that they couldn't pass through the front door through the legislative process. And I think that's a devious and dangerous game, both for capitalism and for democracy. So I think maybe Vivek just doesn't know how the New York City pension funds are structured. We've got five separate funds. They've got 70 trustees. Those trustees are cops and firefighters and teachers, in many cases, elected by the very workers and retirees whose money this is, whose retirement security this is. And they actually make different decisions about this. Teachers and public sector workers voted for this net zero plan. Cops and firefighters did actually did not vote for it. So their funds have not set a net zero target. And look, I understand why fossil fuel executives and 2024 presidential candidates are worried about short term one year returns. But I am thinking about a teacher who started teaching this year, who is going to work for a couple of decades and expect her or his pension to be there a couple of decades beyond that long after climate change continues to raise sea levels and temperatures. And my job is to help those trustees put together a pension portfolio that guarantees those returns over the long term. So, yeah, sure, we're going to focus on the long term rather than the short. I understand why Vivek's trying to focus on the short term, but that's just not my job. And I don't know why he and others would deny investors, would deny our trustees the freedom to invest as they see appropriate. That's really funny because I think that the reality is let's talk about the long run. You want to know the very projects that the ESG funds and even large pension funds that are making the ESG push are divesting from? Who's picking up those projects? PetroChina on the other side of the world. And by the way, I'll have a little rude little surprise for you. One of the large shareholders of PetroChina is none other than BlackRock, one of the very firms that pension funds are pressuring here to push net zero standards in the United States without pushing them in China. You want to know who makes more money as a consequence? Just look at their latest financial reports last year. PetroChina makes more money. You want to know who's left holding the bag? Pension fund holders in the United States. So last time I checked, it was global warming. Why do you want to deny the teachers and cops and firefighters who govern the New York City pension fund boards the freedom to invest as they see fit and to judge risks oh, as they see fit? And it seems to me that you do if you're telling people I who they can don't. and can't invest with. I, I think the plan that you put in place today explicitly calls on making your portfolio companies and asset managers align. That's your word, align their behaviors with net zero standards by 2050. It's when in our fact, choice, I think the it's only the choice standard of our funds to invest that money as we see fit. But the laws that to you make support money, yeah. the pension fund plan investors the freedom to invest as we see fit. You want to tell me you want to tell me which stocks I should be responsible for picking? No, I, I, no, I don't it's think so. because I think, it's a Republican job, principle is, to leave oh, investors. Okay, value. Invest. Let's say, okay. Max Max Value value I don't want to, pension guys, funds. gentlemen, you've been very polite so far, and I appreciate yeah. it's obviously a passionate topic. I'm going to cut in a little bit here. Brad, I, I do want to, we talked about the EPA stuff, but again, I only focus on cars because it's kind of what I know as a 30-year amateur car racer. I kind of, you know, understand the technology, so that's what I use as sort of my launching off point. Is it the point of the government, the EPA, who are not elected officials, to be making these kinds of rules that, you know, for me and for all three of us on this camera, probably it won't matter that much. We can afford to buy the car that we choose. But I do worry that that the government is using these kinds of backdoor regulatory tactics to raise costs on so many. You, you live in Brooklyn. I went to Brooklyn Law School. There's a lot of people in Brooklyn that are not buying a Ford F-150 Lightning. 
There are definitely a lot of people here not buying a Ford F-150 Lightning. But this is why I'm so confused about this fight against the freedom to invest. All I'm looking for is the ability as a fiduciary to these five funds to bring them information and let them have the freedom to invest as they see fit. So you're talking about, and rightly so, consumers having access to the cars they want to buy. I want to make sure that investors have the freedom to invest in as we see fit based on, yes, uh, where we see environmental risk to make that determination. Vivek can make that determination differently, but he's the one supporting laws that would restrict us from making investment decisions as our boards believe are appropriate. Far from it. I think that the number one job of a pension fund board is to make sure that retirees funds are invested in pension fund assets. Amen. We agree on that. To maximize value. Okay. Not Amen. to promote For the values. Long term. Not Over the to time divest of our responsibilities. Not so, to divest from fossil fuel companies, not to divest from certain sectors by rule because they're undesirable, but, but to chase value. That's the job of fund managers. And I think that's actually, everyone's free to invest wherever they want. But if you're managing somebody else's Not according to the money, laws that you you're obligation. supporting, they wouldn't let me make the decisions that, that our boards would, well, would want to make. I'll give you an example. Last year, our true. boards brought shareholder resolutions at pharmaceutical companies that we believed had insider trading rules were allowing us, that were now enabling them basically to steal from our retirees. But the legislation that you and others support would prevent us from bringing shareholder resolutions. That's false. On behalf That's of just our false. Uh, I think the only Good legislation okay. I support is actually rolling back Biden's new ESG rule, which effectively says that you can take into account factors other than investment return, which you clearly are. Do you, you think have, insider look, trading it, it starts, is a factor yeah. other than investor I return? I think, Brad, I don't want to speak. Brad, let me jump in here, guys, and we're going to wrap it up. And Brad, I think I, and I don't want to speak for Vivek, but I think. I think some of the frustration is some people, maybe some of your constituents are watching right now from New York are saying, well, gosh, if we had bought, you know, like a basket of oil and gas stocks last year, we would have made 30 or 40 percent on our money. So you're, you you guys Again, are obviously one year returns. No, I agree. I agree. But they are see- great for oil executives and they're great for grifting 2024 presidential candidates. But they're not great for first year teachers who are worried about whether their retirement security What's, will be there for them. I'm trying to, I'm, I am struggling to understand the connection. What is the connection? I don't fully understand the connection of long term because you view Exxon Mobil, you'll say is going away. Basically, first, I think there's a big risk to stranded assets. Second, I think there's serious liability that an enormous number of companies have. And we that's why we need to see disclosure. A huge amount of what actually ESG or responsible investing is, is just getting more disclosure from portfolio companies about what are the assets they're holding and what are the risks they're facing. And the legislation that President Biden vetoed, so much of what it does is just provides that information to investors. It used to be a Republican principle to provide provide information to investors and to allow trustees Brad, to, I have a question. to invest and they I have see a question. fit. And I just do you don't know understand scope, why that's changed. Do you, Brad, I have a question for you. Do you know what scope three means? You adopted scope three scope. emissions targets. Do you know what Absolutely. scope three means? Yeah. Scope one are the emissions that come that you produce essentially in your plant or building. Yep. Scope two What's is scope from three? the energy or electricity you buy. And scope three are upstream and downstream. So that if you're a car company, your scope three emissions are the emissions that come when consumers drive those cars around and burn oil in their gas tanks. Yeah. Somebody's so got to worry about is, that. Let's wrap it up. But Vivek, it Vivek, let me ask you, Vivek, let me ask you a question as well. I want to wrap it up, be fair. And I agree with Brad. What he's saying is that more disclosure is always better. And can you agree, Vivek, that we need more ESG? Dis- I'm telling you, if I left TV today, like if I quit tonight and tomorrow, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to open up an ESG consulting company because there's billions of dollars floating around with unclear sort of metrics. Would you agree with that? The industry is still a little bit of the Wild West. I agree that there's an ESG profitable consulting industry because of these disclosure rules. But here's what I will say is materiality standards already demand that if information is material, companies have to disclose that to investors. So by definition, any additional layer of disclosure automatically means that you thought it wasn't material under the old standards. You can't have it both ways. And where's the China-related investment risks? Note the pin drop silence on that issue. No, no, let's try try Not at all. I actually think China-related investment risks are appropriate to be disclosed and debated by investors, but this legislation would deny us the freedom to make those very investment decisions. Gentlemen, a spirited and respectful, mostly debate, and I appreciate it. Vivek Ramaswamy, Lander, thank you very much, gentlemen. Guys, have a good night. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Good night. All right. Take care. Well, we are just getting started. And up next, can Warner Brothers Discovery relight?